Uh, uh, we're excited to be back home for another home game, have homecoming. Uh, that's a big deal for our fans, a big deal for our players. Um, and the health update, uh, Jeff Whitaker uh, will be officially out for this season. Uh, he will redshirt. Um, obviously, that's a, that's a blow for our defense, but at the same time, it'll be good for the future. Justin Garrett uh, will not play this week, uh, but uh, it'll be week to week after that. Uh, we're really looking forward to practicing. I, I've told our guys that we're focused on getting better uh, each week, of, uh, you know, each week, and this, but this week will be no different. Questions? I guess had Jeff in particular take it started with him and then Justin as well because he obviously had such a big spring and didn't yeah. have to be dealing with this this long. Well, first of all, Jeff, I mean, you know, uh, he's kind of been playing banged up the last year or so anyway, and I think it'll just be good for him and, uh, you know, to be healthy. And so that's our, that's our goal to get him healthy for, for next year and uh, have a chance to have his best season. And for Justin, why week to week as opposed to the red shirt at this point? Yeah, we're just going to see, you know, how uh, he reacts. I mean, he wants to play, and uh, we'll just see how everything happens for that. Because I had time to watch the film and you go back over the Ole Miss game. What, what, what stuck out to you the most about that on both sides of the ball? Well, the well, first thing that stood out is we, we improved. Um, we improved. Our, our, our players played extremely hard. Um, that's kind of really what stood out to me. I mean, we still made some mistakes that uh, we got to get corrected. Uh, had a chance really to put the game away, you know, on the offensive side, um, middle of the fourth quarter, and we had the turnover, and it just it made it a, a tough, tough deal at the end. But uh, there's areas that we can improve on. That's a good thing, and uh, so our message is going to stay the same. When you talk about the turnovers. Obviously, you, know, you had two right there. How do you? What can you do about those and how, other than stress it, obviously? No, you got to coach it better. You, the players got to be uh, more accountable. Um, and you just got to be more disciplined. I mean, that's what it comes down to. And uh, we got to do a better job. The one on the exchange between Trey and Nate was a Well, that right there was a run through. I mean, they didn't have a chance on that. That was just a run through. We had a bust up front from a freshman, and we just we got to get better. And that's the things that that uh, we got to we got to get better on, and we got to. You know, stop making mistakes. But uh, the good thing is, I feel confident that that mistake won't happen again. But is that was more up front than it was in the backfield. Is Trey a guy who, when he comes off, says, you know, give me another chance to see one of those guys who, you know, doesn't wants to get back on the field to, to make up for that? Or how, how well, there's no doubt. Of course, of course, that wasn't Trey's fault on that. Like I said up front, that was a that was a bust up front, and the quarterback and the tailback didn't have a chance on that. You talked about having aggressive attacking defense. Uh, way up there in tackles for loss. How pleased have you been with, I guess, the nature of the defense so far? Well, I tell you what, they were playing fast. Um, played in their backfield a lot of the a lot of the night, and I thought that was a, a big key to the game. Um, we got our crowd involved, and our crowd was was unbelievable. The crowd helped us win that game, and a lot of it had to do with our defense getting something to cheer about. Coach uh, Gabe Wright was telling me that it takes a lot of confidence to do well in the fourth quarter, and uh, he was saying that this team has improved a lot in the past six weeks. What have you seen from this team uh, from the start of the season and from now as far as mental passing mm -hmm. goes? Well, the biggest thing, I think our, our team has bought into what our coaches have tried to, uh, to tell them. Uh, you know, they're, they're playing for the guy beside them. Um, they're practicing hard. They're, they're trying, to, uh, trying to improve. And uh, so I think that's the biggest thing that stands out to me. Gus, Nick got banged up a little bit in the end game. How's he doing? Yeah, uh, you know we expect him to, uh, you know, to be ready to go. Uh, I don't think it's, it's anything that's too too big a deal. Are you planning to have him practice this week? Yes. Yeah. Gus, what do you look to get out of a week like this? Because not to put down an opponent, but they've certainly had a tough go this season, tough go the past couple of years, I guess. Yeah. FBS team. So, what what are you looking to accomplish? Well, uh, like I said, I know I keep sounding like a broken record, but I'm looking for us to improve. It doesn't make difference we're playing Old Miss or Western Carolina. We're going to go about the same way. Uh, we're going to have the same approach to practice with the same intensity. We're going to worry about us, and we, that's what we need to do. I mean, we hadn't arrived yet. We got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of areas we can improve on, and that's going to be our message. So, I expect our guys to. 
come out today and practice just like they have, or even better, intensity-wise and, and focus to detail-wise. We talked about the success of the fourth quarter defense and how you know they held teams, and obviously the pressure was impressive Saturday. But how much do you worry about the big yardage again? Another 450 yard plus game, you know, give up big plays across the board. Well, you know, I, I think the bottom line is find a way to win. Um, and, and the guys have done that. And the, the plays you're talking about, I mean, we need, we need to, to get better in those areas. And that's what we're focused on. As coaches, you focus on the things that uh, you need to improve on. Uh, but a lot of times this season, when the game's been on the line, uh, our guys have found a way to make plays you know, on both sides of football. And I, I think that says a lot about our guys. But as coaches, we'll definitely focus on those things as, you know, that, you know, that uh, can help stay away from those situations. You guys can talk about the passing game. Is this a week where you'd like to get that in the sink? And well, you know, obviously you'd like to be balanced. I mean, that's the best offenses, you know, are usually balanced, especially in our league, and we've got to be more balanced. But at the same time, each game unfolds differently. And the other night, you know, we were having success running the football, and uh, our quarterback was executing the read zone extremely well. Um, so each game is different. But ideally, you'd like to be balanced. Talk about that zone read with, with Nick. Was that obviously that was part of the game plan to get him more ball, But is he making better decisions on when to keep it? When they, when he's getting more where he's more reactive and he doesn't have to think so much. And when you get to that point, uh, that's good. Like I said last week, was really good for him having the week off before that and to get better at that. And he really did a very good job in the read game. And, and all the years that Auburn's played, and, and for all the great running backs, this is the first time that you've had four different hundred-yard rushers in the season. What does that speak to? Is that is that the talent you have to, have to play calling? Or what well, I, I think that we first of all we have three running backs. We've been saying that we feel good about all three of those guys, and they're all three different. <clears throat> and then our quarterback, you know, we we knew when he got here that he could really um, create things on the on the ground. The other night he showed a lot of toughness too. That's kind of what stood out to me. But uh, we can run the football and. In this league, you, you need to be able to run the football. Like we were saying earlier, we just need to get where we're balanced and be able to throw the football effectively to get some more first downs. If we do that, we got a chance to be a pretty solid offense before it's all said and done this year. Yes, you talk about Carl Lawson and just what <coughs> makes him different. Well, um, you know, we recruited him. We felt like you know his motor is uh, is really something else. I mean, he plays extremely hard. College football is a different game than high school, and uh, it took him a couple of weeks to, you know, to get everything down. And the last few weeks, he's been improving. Coach Garner's had a good plan for him, and uh, he just turned it loose. And he played his best game. It was a very complete game, uh, not just rushing the passer, but against the run. And uh, if he keeps improving, he's got a chance to be a really good player. What about a guy like Ricardo Lewis, who obviously had a good preseason, hasn't necessarily had that. That breakout game, so to speak. What do you see for him in practice? What do you expect the rest of the year? Yeah, Ricardo's a, a very good athlete. Um, you know, he didn't play receiver in high school, and I think it's just he'll get more and more comfortable as he goes, and uh, he'll have one of those games that you know people call a breakout game, and then he'll figure it out and probably not look back. How much has Nick's inconsistency the first couple games, you know, been a result of him just trying to get comfortable, not just with the offense, but with the team? I mean, with Players just kind of getting to know each other, like you said, spring he wasn't here for. So, yeah. how much of that part of the relationship part of it been an issue? Really, uh, his teammates have a lot of respect for him. Uh, you know, he's he's kind of a quiet guy. He didn't say much, but um, he comes to practice. He practices hard every day. He's got a great attitude. He's very coachable, and his teammates respect that. Uh, so he's he's earned their their respect and really trust uh, in a short period of time. Yes, this is a week that. Like to see Jonathan Wallace have an opportunity to play a little bit more than he has. Yeah, yeah, that that would be good, and uh, you know some other guys too would be good. That's best case scenario. Coach, I was told that this is the 100th homecoming game for Auburn. What does that mean to you? And does that make this one maybe a little bit more special? Yeah, first of all, homecoming special anyway, especially here at Auburn. And if it is the hundredth, that's that's even better. Um, I know our players are excited to, to be back home and the fact that uh, it's homecoming game.
Guess how did Brandon Fultz and the other guys who replaced Jalen, how did they grade out in the first game? They, they did a solid job. Um, you know, Brandon played played a lot more snaps than he has before. Kyle Frazier uh, also was helping with that role, played uh, played a few snaps at wide receiver. And, but uh, I thought they did an overall <coughs> solid job. What did you see out of Kyle Frazier at wide receiver this, this week? Uh, he'll, he'll do the same thing. He'll play some wide receiver and uh, you know, especially now that we lost Jalen, he's a guy that understands the offense. He's a smart guy. He's similar to Cody. I mean, he played quarterback in this offense. Cody picked it up very quick in the same type of role. Is that kind of why you made the switch, bringing him back from safety to wide out? Or was that uh, there, there was some factors. That was one of them. How, how much was there knowing the, the scheme and blocking, Brandon especially, out wide, how much does that uh, factor in your decision to make them receivers like uh, Denson? Yeah, I mean, you look at us, I mean, we've always needed receivers to be able to block effectively on the perimeter. Um, and that's a big thing of what we do. And um, so that that's a big part of it. I know CJ hadn't played a whole lot lately. Is he just trying to get back to full speed? Yeah, yeah he's just trying to get back to full speed. He was banged up last week, and uh, I think he played one play. He was by half speed. And so we just said, you know, let's, let's give him some rest. And, and, and we'll need him. We'll need him 100%. And, He'll be there. He'll be there pretty quick. How's, how's Gabe Wright doing? Like we talked about all the youngsters up on the defensive front, but how, how's he doing this year? You know, I really felt like Gabe had his best game um, of the season. I don't think it was close. Um, you know, he's doing what Coach Garner asked. Um, doing a good job with uh, the run fits up front, and did a good job in the pressure. You know, when they were passing up front too. So. That is best overall game. Is it almost easier for the youngsters to kind of make a strong push, uh, you know, compared to the say the seniors and juniors, just because they're used to maybe doing it another way, and then they have to kind of adjust to? I don't think so. I mean, this, you know, we went through spring with these guys, and now they all should should really be in the same boat as far as that goes. Yes, Rodney spoke to me 